next on the list is pneumothorax, which is a page that we're going to use to talk about flail chest, and we're going to talk about um, lung cancer on that page, which is the next page. Should be anyway. If you look at this page, the type of pneumothorax that we're speaking of, which is the only one that they're focused on, is a tension pneumothorax. So this is a type of tension pneumothorax. You could have a hemothorax when you have some type of puncture wound or surgery. So if you have a stab wound, a gunshot to the chest, a thoracotomy, a cabbage, whatever, you could have a hemothorax. But this is a, a pneumothorax. And I always tell you that anything that happens in the chest cavity or the thoracic cavity can give you pneumo. If I'm inserting a central line into the subclavian, pneumo. If I have a liver biopsy, boom, pneumo. If I'm doing a thoracentesis for a pleural effusion, boom, pneumo. Just inserting the chest tubes for the pneumo, pneumo. Crazy. Uh, cabbage. Any kind of surgery, any kind of anything in the thoracic cavity can give you a pneumothorax. How do I make a pneumo a pneumo? You're going to put these things here. Number one, the way I make a pneumothorax a pneumothorax is I say that the patient has tracheal deviation. So the patient has a tracheal deviation. Sometimes it's called a medial spinal shift. And the tracheal deviation is going to be to the unaffected side. Tracheal deviation is going to be to the unaffected side. You're going to have a shift in the PMI. What's the PMI? What is that? It's a cardiac term. Point of maximal impulse. Your PMI will be shifted, quote me, like star it. So you'll have diminished heart sounds, at least on one side. You will have uneven labored breathing, uneven labored breathing. Asymmetrical chest expansion, asymmetrical chest expansion, paradoxical is a word that might mean the same thing, paradoxical, paradoxical breathing. So I'm going to say those all again because they're critical. You're going to have a tracheal deviation to the unaffected side, a medial stinal shift, a shift in the PMI. You're going to have a patient that actually has diminished heart sounds, labored breathing, Asymmetrical chest expansion, paradoxical, paradoxical lung expansion, uneven. Uh, I would add that language next to pneumothorax of flail chest. And the reason why you give a shit about that is flail chest means that somebody's ribs are broken. So it means a fractured rib, flail chest. So anybody with a rib fracture could have a pneumo because it happened in the thoracic cavity, ain't that right? Okay, so you guys got to know that maybe they'll sneak it in on you and say flail chest. And then you're going, oh, Lord, this is everything to do with pneumo. What do you think your first nursing action is? What do you think? 
common sense after all this shit I just said. Oxygen? Yeah, oxygen. What kind of mask are you using? A non-rebreather. What are your liters per minute? 10 to 15. Sound like you're cluing in here. Okay, so what I'm saying is your behavior didn't change just because you got a different condition. Kick in. Come on with me. Stay on over on the wild side. Let's go. O2 first. Okay, that should help. Uh, because that's exactly what we do. Now, why in God's name did it happen and who gets it the most? Well, on the right-hand side of your paper, you can see some of the reasons. What I would add to the reason is an oscopy procedure. A bronchoscopy, an endoscopy, a hysteroscopy, a whatever it is that's going to be. It has to be the thoracic cavity. So an endoscopy or a um, bronchoscopy, those would both be in the actual thoracotomy area. I mean, thora, uh, thoracic area. Uh, thoracotomy would be another one. Cabbage, as you know. Now, let's do some rules. We have a couple weird ass rules around here when it comes to the lungs. Rule number one is good lung down, no matter what's going on, with about two exceptions only. I'll say it again. Good lung down is rule number one. So if I tell you your patient has a pneumothorax on the right side, how are you going to position them? You fuck that up. I'll try it again. If I tell you that the patient has a pneumo on the right side, how are you going to position them? Yes, yes, yes. The babies are sleepy. So you're going to run and remember it like that. Now, there are two exceptions, and these are so big. The number one exception to the rule, good lung down, is if you took the whole damn lung out. So let's examine that thought. If you took my entire right lung out, I could never do good lung down. Because if I did that, then all the blood from the removal of this lung would pour into the, the good lung, and this would now become a hemothorax. So instead of that, you have to put the patient on the operative side. Now be careful on this test, because look what I got. I got lobectomy versus pneumonectomy. And pneumonectomy, I took the whole damn lung out. Lobectomy, all I took was a lobe. If I just took a lobe, going back to that rule, good lung down. Now that was one exception. Remember I said you got two. The second exception is if you cracked your ribs. If you fracture your ribs, and unfortunately we see this with domestic violence. So with partner violence, my uh, precious, precious patient was stomped in her chest with her by her boyfriend's her significant other's boot on his foot obviously so just stomped uh, i had another one that got kicked with the horse but either one flail chest fractured ribs in this case it's not going to be good lung down because we actually need to lay the patient on the fractured ribs because we're trying to immobilize those pieces as a matter of fact, I'm wrapping the patient real tight, trying to make sure that I don't let these pieces move. So if I lay them on that side, I further immobilize them. See, what we don't want to happen with them little pieces is that they move and cut into organs surrounding the area or the viscera. Yeah, it's not a good thing. So, you know, you got two exceptions, a pneumonectomy or a flail chest. You don't want to do good lung down. Okay, now some other issues for this, you and I both know how we do the damn thing. We treat this with a chest tube, right? And remember with the chest tube, it's gonna create a negative pressure. Obviously chest tubes are on your chest, you already have a handout for that. 
but you just need to remember that the chest tubes for this patient is going to create a negative pressure now the only other thing i have to tell you about this patient is sometimes they try to be mean and hateful and they give you this patient and they say that they have a sucking wound if this patient has a sucking wound which is usually caused by some injury gunshot violence some shit uh, you're going to cover like a gunshot or a stabbing uh, you're going to cover three sides only you're not covering the whole thing up it's called a sucking wound did you guys talk about that in school okay <laughs>